do chicks like guys who use arch links? So some of you may have gathered from that intro what this video is gonna be about. And for the rest of you, this is gonna be about a hardware RAID 1 controller from Icy Dock. Obviously it's not in here, cause well, it's right here. But this is the Tough Armor RAID 1 MB9025PRB. Icy Dock, you gotta work on your naming convention. If I were in charge, it would be something easy like the dual 2.5 inch RAID 1 replacing grandma's CD drive status LED boy 69. Legally, if you use that name, you have to pay me royalties. That's the rules. So yeah, this is a hardware RAID 1 controller that will fit dual 2.5 inch discs up to 15 millimeters in width. A cool thing about it that you probably noticed is that it fits very nicely in the five and a quarter inch drive bay that surprisingly a lot of cases still ship with. So if you wanna make use of that wasted space that you're not using for a CD drive, uh, this will be a perfect replacement. Now, if you don't have a five and a quarter inch bay, that's perfectly fine. Icy Dock has so many different options for different configurations and different case types, internal, external, uh, SATA, SAS, NVMe. If you can think that it exists, it probably does on Icy Doc's store. So I'll leave a link below to their Amazon page. Go check them out. And um, yeah, they make some good stuff. Now the unboxing experience wasn't anything to write home about. You get an instructions manual, you get the actual device and some screws to get everything mounted. To connect this to your system, you're gonna use standard SATA power and data connectors. So you'll pretty much be able to connect it to any system from this decade and probably the previous decade. As I said before, it fits nicely into a five and a quarter inch bay and accepts two 2.5 inch discs that are mounted to these easy to remove sleds and are hot swappable. Just press the little button on the front, remove it, swap in your new drive, put it back in and you're good to go. Now on the instructions, they say that the rebuild time, if you do a swap, will take about 10 minutes per 100 gigabytes and I'm using two one terabyte silicon power SSDs. And when I did the test, you would think, you know, 10 minutes per 100 gigabytes. If I have one terabyte drive, that should take roughly an hour and a half to two hours. Yeah, it took over five hours to completely rebuild a one terabyte disk. So I think Icy Dock is being a little ambitious with their estimates for how long it's gonna take. And if you want one of these devices yourself, you can pick one up from their Amazon store for $170. Now, yes, I know that is not cheap at all. Um, I wish it was cheaper, but um, for what it is and what it does, I think it's a fair price. I would like to see it under $150. Hopefully it can go on sale soon, but um, for what it is, a hardware RAID 1 controller uh, with a nice form factor and status indicating LEDs, not a terrible price. Another cool feature this has is the status indication LEDs. So on the front, you'll see different LEDs to inform you of different things. So it'll tell you if the RAID 1 configuration is good or if it's degraded with a green LED or a red LED. When you're rebuilding, it'll give you a status from 25, 50, 75, and 100%. If a drive fails, it'll tell you which one is actually failed and I really like that because a previous video I did on an external uh, RAID 1 configuration setup from OWC, yeah, there were no status indication LEDs. So if a drive failed, 
it was kind of up to you to figure that out. So really awesome feature. Now I've used the term hardware RAID a lot in this video and I haven't really explained what it is. You've probably heard of the term RAID, but RAID can be set up in basically two ways, hardware or software. Hardware meaning that you have a physical device that you connect your drives to. That device is going to do all the RAID calculations before sending the drive information to your operating system. With software RAID, the devices are connected directly to your system and you're relying on your processor and your operating system to do all the RAID calculations. The pros and cons of a hardware RAID configuration like this is that the pros being that it's usually a little bit faster because you have a dedicated device doing the RAID calculations. Another pro is that it's usually much easier to set up. You literally just plug your drives in, plug that device to your motherboard and everything is done automatically, which also means that if you want to use RAID 1 as a boot disk, that makes it way easier. And in some cases, it's not even possible with software RAID. The one major con is cost. Obviously, you have to buy a dedicated hardware RAID controller if you want to use a hardware RAID configuration. Now, there are BIOS level software RAID configurations that will actually do all the RAID setup before your operating system even sees the disks. But again, it's just easier in a hardware configuration setup. So I still give hardware the pro on that side. Okay, this thing obviously has a lot of cool features and looks really good on paper, but how does it perform? Well, I set this up as my boot disk for Ubuntu. The installation process was extremely easy. Obviously, it just sees it as a single one terabyte drive. Once in Ubuntu, I ran some speed tests and write performance was really good on these drives. I got 503 megabytes per second and read performance was about half that at 260 megabytes per second. Now, these aren't really expensive, really good SSDs the speeds of the writes and the reads will be heavily dependent on the drives that you use in here. So take those numbers with a grain of salt. Now, just to prove that you can hot swap these drives and it does perform as expected, I will turn this guy on. I probably need to plug it in first. All right, let's try this again. All right, so here we are in our Linux Ubuntu desktop. I am going to go in here and show you that we are actually on this system. Here you can see our one terabyte hardware RAID 1 setup and just a random two terabyte hard disk that I have in there. But yeah, our operating system is run completely off of the two disks in here in RAID 1, which are mirrors, and they are hot swappable, meaning that theoretically I should be able to remove one of these while it's running and see no stutters, performance degradation, or basically anything. All right, so we're messing around in here. Let's open up File Explorer and, oh, whoops. One of the drives died or came out. And here it is. And once you look at that, we can still browse, go to all the files we had before, which basically wasn't much, but as you can see, our operating system still works. No issues, we're good. But you will see that uh, the RAID 1 OK LED is off, meaning that uh, yeah, it's not okay. Uh, one of the disks is removed. So assuming I change this out and put a new disk in, it's going to have to rebuild. So if I put this back in, it'll see it as essentially a new disk and it will start the rebuild process. And here you can see, yep, it is kicked off. It is at 25%. Well, obviously it's not at 25%, but that is the LED that is blinking. The way it works is that the source disk is solid green and the drive that is being built to is going to be flashing. So yeah, it seems like everything is working as expected. This is now gonna take another five hours to rebuild, but that's okay. So let's put this on the ground. It's probably making noise. So overall, what are my thoughts? Um, I think this is a great uh, device if you're in the market for a hardware RAID 1 setup. And obviously, if you have a five and a quarter inch bay in your case. I do wish it was a little cheaper at $170. That is pretty expensive, but again, it is extremely convenient, uh, it works great, and it does give you the peace of mind of knowing uh, what your disk status is and if there's any issues. But yeah, like I mentioned before, if you want something like this, but you don't have a five and a quarter inch bay, IC Doc has so many different things. Uh, please check them out. I will leave an affiliate link down below. If you end up buying anything from there, it helps me out a ton. So please check them out. If you want this, I will leave a link directly to this specific device. But if not, just 
check out their store. Maybe you'll find something you want. But that's it. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you learned something. I hope you at least found it somewhat entertaining. If you did, drop a like below. If you like content like this, please consider subscribing. I have links below to uh, my Discord if you want to join that and hang out with a bunch of nerds, as well as a link to my Patreon if you want to support the channel that way. I sincerely appreciate all the Patreons that I have right now. You guys are the best, but that is it. If you got this far, I appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.